I was traveling on the first of September. The first of September was about nearly 40 hours for me <laughs> because I left on the first of September. I flew eight hours to Singapore. It was four hours in Singapore. And then I flew 15 hours to here, and it was still the 1st of September. <laughs> Worked that one out. In fact, when I, a few times when I've flown to LA, um, it's a direct flight. Usually I fly direct. And you arrive in America before you leave Australia. <laughs> <laughs> really? So you you fly at like eight ten a.m. and you arrive in LA at eight a.m. on the same day. <laughs> it's a funny world, isn't it, that we live? Sorry, time travel. Time travel yes, <laughs> you could say that. So one of the things I always um, really find fascinating is when Papa talks about, you know, the part in the soul. And don't you find that as we sit here at this moment, we have an eternal part etched into our memory track. You know, our past, the present and the future is sitting there. And I remember once we were meeting Baba in a group of double foreigners and um, Baba said, Baba got, he said, you have the three tilaks, and he got his finger, and he said, the first tilak is the soul, and Baba went, poop. The second tilak is God, and Baba went, poop. And Baba said, the third tilak is drama, and sometimes it goes here, and sometimes it goes here. <laughs> Baba's so sweet and entertaining sometimes, and yet Baba has the capacity to say something so deep. Many times I think even for my journey that how much effort do you make to become soul conscious and remember Baba? And sometimes I think, you know, my relationship with drama is not quite as strong or I don't put the same type of effort or attention into understanding drama. So how much do I accept the scenes of drama after so many years in Gyan? Do I accept my part in drama? And do I accept others? In my self-reflection that if I find it hard to accept another individual's part, it's because I still haven't fully feel comfortable with my part in the drama. And when you look at the, the cycle in the golden age, the soul is completely full, as we know. It's spiritually full. And I'm absolutely comfortable. I'm in harmony. It's like I'm dancing in tune with my part in the drama. And yet there's a hierarchy there. There's kings and queens and all, everyone has a part. And yet I'm completely comfortable with the whole situation. When you fast forward to the end of the cycle and the soul is so empty and the soul finds it so hard to accept itself and sometimes even rejects itself and struggles to accept, you know, the scenes of drama, my part and others' parts. And sometimes I think, you know, we all have this part, you know, this journey in Brahman life, dealing with my thoughts and the account of waste is, you know, we all know about the account of waste. And in a way, I feel that all waste thoughts are a lack of acceptance of the perfect, eternal, imperishable drama. Baba said this morning, it's perfect. It repeats identically, it's predestined. And yet often in my head, I keep fighting. I keep battling with a scene of drama or a part of an individual, parts of some individuals. And in a sense, at one point in my journey, I was thinking, the more I have waste thought, in a sense, indicates the less I've really absorbed the truth of drama, that this is an imperishable, eternal drama. And then the confluence age comes along and Baba begins to heal the fractured soul. You know, Baba gives us the truth to heal. And this is the biggest learning curve of all. But I remember once Baba said that 
you know, the greatest treasure of the confluence age is contentment. And Baba said, describe contentment in such a beautiful way. It's like an inner glow where you feel comfortable with who you are. You are satisfied with your part and you accept the parts of everyone. I mean, and when I hear that, I think that's the ultimate state of wisdom, isn't it? To live in this world and feel so comfortable about who I am and about everybody else and their parts. It needs so much truth, especially at this time in the drama. And I've, I've often thought, you know, we have a relationship with Baba. It's easy. Baba is so attractive, so lovely. You know, your heart goes to Baba. But... You know, we also have a relationship with drama, but drama is like a moody person, you know, and you never know. You know have you lived with a moody person ever? When you wake up every morning, you're never sure quite, <laughs> are they going to love you or they can <laughs> beat you? Or <laughs> and drama is like that. And so, you know, do I fight with drama? Do I, you know, reject the scenes of drama? Do I try to control the outcomes of drama? Often we become so controlled. We have such a deep desire that something happens. We put so much energy in trying to control an outcome. Do, do I accept my part in drama? Do I accept the parts of others in drama? Because... If I'm fighting and battling, it means that I don't have a very healthy relationship with drama. And why? What's the effect of that on my life? Actually, it really affects my relationship with Baba. Because drama, the scenes of drama keep cutting my connection with Baba. And my mind gets absorbed in a situation and a personality and a behavior. And so Really, if I don't have that, in a sense, that detached and loving relationship with drama, then constantly drama takes over my thinking and I get absorbed and it just makes me, you know, really feel quite distant from Baba. And when you think what Baba said today, this drama is eternal and predestined. Every millisecond is recorded eternally. That's such a deep truth. And I think only 84 birth souls can really understand that. So if I use the language and I say, oh, it was such a good scene of drama, or oh, that was a bad scene of drama, that's actually body consciousness. Drama is, there's no good or bad, it just is. You know, the, the nature of the drama, it just is. And when I think about drama, I think, well, what sort of relationship do I have? Because if I'm reacting to the scenes of drama and those reactions just produce a whole tsunami of wasteful thinking, you know, that shows that it's not very healthy. Or if I reject a scene of drama, you know, I just don't like it. I want to rewrite the script. Baba, can we rewrite the script for next cycle? <laughs> I think a lot of us would like to do that sometimes. And yet it almost, it shows too that, Really, I haven't really understood the depth of the truths that Baba's giving us, or even controlling the drama. Because sometimes I think, you know, one of the aspects of body consciousness, we, we have such an attachment to how things should be, such an attachment that I want things to be in a certain way. I want an outcome. I want this success in service. And I just build myself up for a lot of disappointment. You know, I have this, such huge expectations. And I think when we're soul conscious, we, we fully accept the perfection of drama. It's absolutely perfect. You know, I remember um, Daddy Jenki telling us once she was having a meal with um, Daddy G. And she was saying that, it was a long story, something that it was going on. And she said, Daddy G was eating, you know, just uh, sitting there quietly eating. And Daddy Jenkins was saying, Daddy, this happened, that happened. This one said this, this one went there. Uh, went on for that. She went on. And Daddy G just kept sitting there eating and eating and eating. And when Daddy Jenkins finished, she said, I spoke for five or ten minutes. Daddy G said, drama. <laughs> <laughs> 
And Betty Jagger was just saying, you know how you get absorbed in the story and, and, you know, she said it was really, she said it in a very much more entertaining way. And yet we make effort, don't we? We actually put effort to do something. And yet the millisecond it happens, we accept, we accept. And I even remember once we were meeting Baba um, in the early 80s and there was a brother from France who had a sickness. We were sitting in the meditation hall and um, Baba was meeting somebody. And, you know, we all remember that atmosphere. It was just so, that vibration was something you just don't get anywhere. So beautiful. And Baba was meeting someone. And this brother had this terrible pain just come and he screamed really loudly. I mean, it was such a scream like someone had put a knife in his back. And the whole hall went, Poof, you know, like everyone went, what happened? And we were all, <laughs> Baba did not even look up. He finished his few words and then slowly he looked over and he said, is he okay? Like, so Baba showed love, Baba showed concern, but it was amazing to see how absolutely detached. And we were all, <laughs> what's happened? What's going on? You know? <laughs> And it really, I remember we discussed afterwards, just that's in a sense the level we have to get to, especially seeing our world. We live in the most unpredictable world. Any day, anything can happen anywhere. And really, I've, I feel this need for detachment and the ability to stay so stable on drama is just an essential requirement to survive during these times. But you know, the part of the soul, I think, is really such a fascinating thing. And Jagdish Bhai, I remember him once saying, and I really love it, that it's like a long playing record. Do you remember the old LPs? And he said, the LP is like the soul that has a perfect part. Time is the needle. And wherever the needle touches the part, just the actions, the behaviors, everything just comes out. And in a way, when you think it's just all pre-recorded and time is bringing us all out, the part. So we're all sitting in this room, all those online whom I can see. It's really lovely to see everyone online. <laughs> you know, everyone is, we're all playing this eternal part. It's absolutely, you know, something which is really extraordinary. And... You know, the part I find really fascinating because the whole part is sitting in the soul. And so sometimes we have deja vu, you know? Who's had deja vu where you, you know what that means, that it means that suddenly, you know, you dream of something and then you step into that scene. You know, once when I was much younger, I was with a friend we were sitting somewhere and then suddenly he said, I dreamt this and this person's just about to come in the door and that person came in the door, just like that. So it's almost like sometimes the, the pre-recording we tune into and that's why some people become psychic or whatever. Or we dream, you know how you dream at night and it's like the intellect relaxes and the consciousness just wanders through all the part. So you have some things that happen today some things in your childhood and some things you have no memory of. And they're all jumbled together in this strange mixture because everything is sitting in the part, but it's not regulated. The intellect regulates throughout the day. And one of the reasons I feel the world, there's so much stress and anxiety in the world is that the human souls are tuning into the future part that is one of chaos. You know, people can feel this world is collapsing. You know, psychically, they're tuning in that all this world is going to collapse around them. And so Baba talks about four things that I often think about. He talks about the part, the role, the story, and really like the eternal self. And in a sense, the part is the program that's in the soul. The part is you know, eternally sitting in the memory track and time is just emerging the part. And the part, you know, some have a part, they're more extrovert. Naturally, it's their sanskara sort of. Some are more introvert. 
some are very creative, some are sustainers, some are both. We have our part. But when we really identify with our part at this point of time, you know, we think I am this, this is who I am, the part. That's where sometimes, you know, I don't like my part, I don't accept my part. And we know that can create a lot of upheaval. The role is like the expression of the part. The part is in the soul. And when I express my part, I, I'm a partner, I'm a parent, I'm a center coordinator, I'm a BK, whatever. And when I think I'm my part, that's when I compare with others and all that stuff. You know, because when I identify with what is what I'm not, my part or my role, that creates a sense of competition and jealousy and all that sort of thing. But the third thing is my story. And I find that really fascinating, which is what sits in my memory. And I, I think in many ways, it's the biggest attachment of Brahmins is that what's happened to me, how people have treated me. You know, that story is so powerful inside, you know, my head. And I keep identifying with it. You know, this is who I am. But actually, I'm not my part. I'm not a role, and I'm not even my story. We have to even let go identifying with all the stories I've collected about what's happened to me, how I've been treated, what people have said, what people have done. I mean, some psychologists say 70% of our thinking is about the past. I wouldn't be surprised. Just constantly recycling what has happened. And yet Baba comes and says, you are an eternal soul. You are not your part, really. You're, that's not who you are. You play, you have a part, you play a role, you have a story, but you are an eternal soul. And in a sense, even Baba, the way he talks, he has a part. Baba has an eternal part. He comes at his time and he plays his part, but he's completely detached. He doesn't identify with his part, whereas we have started to identify with it and then we compare I like my part I don't like my part or we when I identify with my role or I really identify with my past and I start to really feel a victim in life and you know and so many things and uh, I think it's so interesting when we really you know when Baba says I really feel that when I absorb the depth of the truth that I have a part in this eternal drama and you have a part. I can accept others' parts. I, the game of having waste or feeling hurt and upset and disturbed by the part of other human souls starts to finish when I really, it's just a drama and each one's part is accurate. You know, some have a part that's so sweet. Everyone loves them. Some have a part they're not so sweet. <laughs> There's a little bit of other stuff, but, you know, you need a whole variety in the drama. And I just love it when Baba talks about drama. I really, I think it really helps remain really stable. Yeah, it's really, I think, you know, when Baba was talking about having the, the three things, you know, how much have I really absorbed the truth that this is a play, this is a drama. And, you know, once in Sydney, we did an exhibition and um, we got, you remember that picture of the world um, taken from out of space? They first had it in about the 1970s, I think. It's just the world sitting in outer space. It's so common now. And we had it blown up so it was bigger than this wall here. And we had an exhibition at Sydney University and we put it right up in the middle of the university and it's like, it was the world drama starring, you know, Christ, Buddha, Muhammad, with a supporting cast of five billion actors, you know, <laughs> directed by God, the Supreme. And people loved it and they really got it. They, it was, I was quite amazed. People said, yeah, it's like that, isn't it? <laughs> and it was, it was quite amazing how you know, those things happen. But I, I remember once too, Daddy Prakashmani was in um, Australia and we did a program 
was in the 1980s, a huge program at a, at a university, and about 2,000 people came for the whole day. It was so successful. And when we came back to the center at night, everyone was so happy. You know, when something works out, that lightness. And there was a lot of fun and celebration. And Daddy G praised everyone. And then she said, if no one had come, would have you been just as happy? <laughs> and we thought, it's a good question, really, isn't it? Is my happiness dependent on outcomes? Is my happiness dependent on results? Because often, you know, we sort of subtly think, well, success is when lots of people come. We have a big Brahmin family, but do I base my self-respect and things on these sorts of things? Or do I really base my self-respect on, you know, my relationship with Baba, not on numbers? You know, there was one sister in my region in Asia, such a sweet soul, such a committed soul. And for the 30 plus years she was running a center, very few people came, you know, because it was in a, a country where majority of the population is Muslim. And obviously, you know, you know, it's wonderful to be there to serve, but not that many will come. And she often used to um, doubt herself, actually. And I remember once Baba speaking to the foreigners, and Baba said, Baba, in each place, some places have a lot of big numbers, some places have a special quality of soul. Some places are serving this type of soul, this, you know, branch of the tree, whatever. And so we don't really have doubt about the outcomes, you know. We just serve with love. And, and I, I think it's such a fascinating part of the, um, in a sense, the shift in Brahman life, because before Giyam, we did actions to get our sense of value in life. Hence why people just career and all those things uh, give them a sense of who they are as a person. And when we come to Gyan, it's the other way around. Rather than doing an action to get something, we take from Baba and then we come into action. And this is why Baba says that if the action is successful, well and good, but if it's not well and good also, we can remain detached and light. And it's so wonderful, isn't it, that, you know, I think we can really become much more detached because I feel one of the most important things at this time is to be very, very, very detached, <laughs> but also very, very, very loving. They have to go together. But I think in this world, we're going to see things I feel that we could never imagine things are going to happen. And of course, they've happened last time also, but incredible things are going to happen. And if we haven't, I remember one Baba once said, if you don't become detached now, drama will force you by compulsion to become detached. And in a sense, I think, you know, detachment is really something that is really, but Baba's detachment. I always say that because detachment often is interpreted. It's the most misinterpreted virtue of Brahmins, I would say, you know, because sometimes people are aloof, cut off, disconnected, not caring. Oh, I'm just being detached. It's not Baba's one. <laughs> it's not Baba's detachment. Mm. On the, the question around the identity, how to disidentify ourselves from the part, role and story? <laughs> um, if I said soul conscious, become soul conscious, would that be enough? <laughs> but this is our journey, isn't it? When you think, I love to spin, when you think when we came at the beginning, we were just a soul without a body, without a role, without a part, without a gender, without an age. We were completely beyond. And over time, we've collected so much identification. And this is Gyan. Gyan is just letting, becoming naked of all of that, just letting everything go to prepare to go back home. You know, I have the feeling the closer I feel to Baba, 
And I sort of, in a sense, I identify with my relationship with Barbara, just all the limited identity start to drop off. I don't really always try to think, oh, I mustn't think like this. I mustn't think like that. I think the other way, I, I try to become something. The more you become soul conscious, and it's something I feel most of us are really superficial in our practice of soul consciousness, you know, compared to the beginning of the yajna. And I'm sure you've heard the stories. Uh, Daddy Ratan Mohini tells amazing stories of how the attention Baba gave them because we are absolutely, totally and utterly body conscious when we come to Baba. And so Baba created such an atmosphere when they'd wake up in the morning before the mind even wanders, I, the soul, incarnate in the body, you know? I, the soul, take my shower. I, the soul, I, the soul, I, the soul. You know, they for 14 years, they lived in this body to break this addiction to body consciousness, which is identifying with a false self rather than living as a true self. And this is the attention, I think, day in, day out, a true yogi is living their life, fulfilling responsibilities, doing service, but internally they're on this constant pilgrimage to become more and more detached from the body and closer and to remember Baba. This is the bread and butter of Brahman life, really. And it just, to me, I remember once Daddy said, Daddy Janki, between Gyan and yoga is attention. And to me, attention is this sanskara where you're constantly just gently, lovefully watching your thinking. So before your thinking goes a long way into a negative state, and you know you, you start to churn something, and, you, and before you know it, you've lost your state. How long does it take to get back? But attention means that as soon as a few thoughts go in the wrong, wrong direction, just tweaking, tweaking, bringing it back. And... I mean, you all, most of us here lived around Daddy Janky. And I mean, I just felt always when I was close to her, not in a tense way, constantly observing herself and learning. That's really, I think, what this life is about, paying this constant attention. But really, I, I think soul consciousness is the fundamental sort of effort and I, you know, I've done so many experiments in the laboratory of my mind. I love to think it like that, that um, experimenting. And I always love to ask the question, how does it feel? Because I think we intellectually know all the knowledge we teach it. And, you know, once um, the double foreigners were meeting Baba in the 1980s, when Baba got us to do the realization course, um, do you remember that, Gita Ben? <laughs> and you know what Baba said? He said an incredible thing. He said, you know the knowledge, you believe the knowledge, you teach the knowledge, but you don't experience the knowledge. And when I heard that, that shifted my whole Brahman life. I realized that in Pakti, all we do is know and believe, and we think that's it. But Gyan, the, we would say the first step is to know, the second step is to believe. The next 998 steps are educating myself to experience so that even the knowledge of the soul that I, I draw out, I extract the juice of peace out of the truth of who I am to the point that nothing can make me peaceless in my life. This is the real journey to um, soul consciousness. And I've done so many experiments. And once I, I asked Didi Manmohini, I said, Didi Baba talks about so many efforts. Like, do you think in one of Yaktamoli, how many things does Baba say to pay attention to? And I said, Didi, some Brahmins feel stressed just thinking which effort to make, you know, because Baba says so many things. I said, Didi, of all the things, what's the most important? You know, straight away she said to be incorporeal. And then I thought, what did Baba, how did Baba summarize 32 years of efforts? Incorporeal, egoless, and viceless. And I, I really, over so many years, have done the experiment 
to feel non-physical, not just believe that, I, that the reality of existence is that I'm a non-physical being separate from this physicality. And honestly, to me, that's the secret of detachment. When I, you know, sometimes you sort of know you feel affected by things, upset by things. So you think, oh, I must be detached. I must be detached. You know, you chant it like a mantra, but your heart's still going boom, 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 boom. <laughs> Everything's affecting you. And yet when you really experience that I'm something, I'm an incorporeal being living in the corporeal world, um, and you feel this sweet separation, it's like Shiv Baba feels this sweet separation. I think you're living in this world and you're not affected by this corporeal world. That's purity, actually. That's real purity to live in this world and not be influenced by what's happening. And I, I've done that for months at a time, really. And it gives such a sweet feeling. You're present, you're contributing, you're doing, but you're not influenced, you're not absorbing, you're not affected. And that's such a feeling of strength, you know, when you feel that. And I, I feel that that's the, you know, that's the real level that Baba wants us to be at. I even remember Daddy Janky once saying that the essence of, you know, the knowledge of the soul is experiencing my eternity. You know, really, when you not just think it and believe it, but feel I always exist. How can you then fear loss of anything, your body, your reputation, your role? When I really go into the depth of who I am, I think so much shifts within me. This is really, I think, um, you know, Baba wants us to go so deep, not just believe these things. Because that's why Baba said, you know the knowledge, you believe it, and you teach it, but you don't experience it. And that's been, ever since Baba said, that's been a real thing for me. How do I convert truth into a feeling? We know the truth, we believe the truth, we teach the truth, but how can I really feel? Because when I extract the truth of the soul, I will be absolutely peaceful. When I extract the truth from Baba, I think, you know, that we just become the embodiment of love and belonging, you know? We start to feel these things. And it's the feelings that sustain us. Once I stayed with Jagdish Bhai and Shakti Naga, and um, I was asking him about these sorts of things, and he said that spiritual experience is the greatest sustenance in this life. Because many Brahmins, you know, we realize, Baba, wow, this is who I am. We're so intoxicated for a year, maybe five years, eight years. And then we're more sustained on faith than experience. So we just get into a routine. We just get into this mundane routine, a bit like a Brahmin devotee. You know, we believe it all, but do I have newness? And I remember once I was walking in front of Baba with um, a few of the older brothers from foreign countries and Baba stopped us. And he said some lovely things, but he said three or four times, create new experiences in yoga, create new experiences in yoga. And I think that's the, the challenge for all of us to bring newness in me, because if I don't have newness in me, I look for newness in service, newness in, you know, always external, going back to the old pattern of, you know, like people today just want this constant newness because there's nothing much inside. And um, that's a real art form, isn't it? To sit down and use truth, Baba's truth, to create a whole new feeling inside. And when you do, you think when you have a, new, a unique yoga experience, it sustains you for weeks. I, many Brahmas, if you ask them, what's been your most special thing? Oh, my first week I had this experience. And that maybe was 20 30, 40 years ago, you know, and since then, not as much. And yet I think it's in such an art form. And even once Baba gave a formula for experience, he actually, in one of the Abhiyak Molis, he said, um, become a point, apply a point, 
remember a point and you'll have spiritual experience. Become a point, the soul, apply a full stop, a point to overthinking and remember a point. And Baba said, you'll have spiritual experiences. Mm. So, yes, I think, you know, sometimes I've had the thought that in the worldly education, you go and you learn so much. All of us have done, gone to university or something. Your head's full of so much information. But in spiritual education, we have one idea, like who am I? I am the soul. Let's go deeper and deeper. And we just don't collect so much information. We take one idea and fathom the depths of that idea. You know, that's really... And that sustains me, the new feelings, the new experiences. It really sustains. Even I remember, I'm rambling on, I know. <laughs> when I came in Gyan, they were still reading some of the Mollies before 1965. And I remember Baba saying in one Saka Moli, amazing, Baba said, children, wake up in the morning and think, who am I? I am a soul. And then Baba, the whole Moli Baba said, there's nothing tinier than the soul. And Baba, kept, it was like Baba coaching us into soul consciousness. Become smaller and smaller, let go. You are the smallest, nothing is small in the soul, even become smaller again. Keep it. it was like Baba coaching us to let go, identifying with this temporary self. But the whole Moli Baba kept saying become smaller let go there's nothing tiny than the human soul it was amazing really so i think i think it's the i often call it the foundation of our sort of practice in a way soul consciousness questions but we'll keep it for more so there is a uh, one question from there are a good number of uh, new Zoom babies. People yes. Who take it course in Zoom. So they're asking about the same thing. Like uh, we Zoom children don't have the luxury of experience meeting face to face with Baba or Dadis. Uh, how can we create those experiences and being part of Yagya? And this weekend is the effort to do that. So we have Charlie Bai and especially in this intimate setting of uh, San Francisco uh, Center. So you're welcome to come in person if you are nearby and try to take as much fragrance as you can through Zoom. Mm. You know what I love about Baba is Baba is so generous. And uh, I mean, he often says some have been here for years, but new ones go faster, doesn't he? And we all have our own part. And I think one, as we've been saying, is whether I've been to Madhaban, I've met Baba or the daddies, just to become a Brahmin is the greatest fortune in eternity. And I think it's good to think, you know, um, be fortune focused. Because, you know, the nature of the mind is to be often focused on misfortune. You know, sometimes I think we have actually found God. Do I, am I, does it really register? Because when it registers, all the petty problems of life just become nothing. But if you focus on the petty problems of life, it cancels out the fortune. And sometimes we think, oh, you know, why didn't I come at this time? Why didn't I come at that time? All of us could have said, why didn't we come at the beginning of the yagya? <laughs> you know? Pardon? Well, I remember someone said in the class to Daddy Janky, Daddy, I wish I'd come at a time when you came. She said, would have you been strong enough to hang in for 60, 70? You know, we all know to hang in in Brahman life, you have to face yourself ultimately. And that's not a small thing. But in saying that, I do think that um, I would really explore the relationship with Baba deeply and practice soul consciousness. You know, because we can sort of refer to study as learning information, and it's good, we learn Gyan, 
but Baba wants us to practice Gyan. And whether you're, you met Baba or met the daddies or didn't, it's really your fortune is created by however long you're in Gyan, what did I do? I remember Baba said, it's not so much how long you're in Gyan, it's once you're in Gyan, what did I do? So I would, and Baba often says, last so fast, fast so first. I've seen some people are coming now who are absolutely flying. If you really, I would say the main thing is to absolutely have one Baba in your heart. And if you do that, you will find you are naturally moving forward. You'll really fly. So, you know, whether we're Zoom babies or whatever, there's a lot of, <laughs> you know, in Sydney, we just had this Iraqi and it was huge. So many came and in Melbourne and there was not that many, but some I'd never met before because they'd all taken Kian online, you know, they came for the first time to Tairaki. Yeah. So it's a different world. I would just think the fortune that I've found, Baba, and um, there's also so much material online. At least you can watch Bab Dada and you can watch the daddies and so on. But if it's possible, I always feel to get to Madaban. I think it's really worth the effort personally. That's my feeling. And uh, this season they're having, they're planning. I'm looking at Abhi right now. <laughs> They're pretty much planning, I think, aren't they, for the whole season for foreigners? Yeah, they're planning. And I know in Australia, many are going, many are going in our region, in Asia. And the family is really planning to go. Mm. Yeah, and Pandav Bhavan also. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so it's good. I don't think it'll be like pre-COVID, but it will be a lot. So I went in um, February, March, and a lot of people said, what was it like, you know, and everything. And I said, well, it was the easiest trip I think I've had in so many years because there was no one in airports. and <laughs> It was so easy, actually. And it was just normal, you know. Like I think sometimes when we live in a world of media that – put so much concern and fear in the minds of so many people, which I always feel be sensible, be cautious, but don't be afraid. Be sensible, be sensible and cautious about your health, but don't base your decision-making on fear. That is body consciousness. We should not be afraid of COVID. That's right. And when you invoke it often, then it happens, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Somehow it, yeah, it happens in drama. Mm. Was there, did you want to ask a question? Yeah. I thought she was, <laughs> time is over. Okay. <laughs> but maybe tomorrow. Um, whole session on Q and A. We can have a whole. And please keep your questions ready, and please uh, channel it to Sister Kyoko. So, so we have a whole okay. uh, session afternoon on Q and A. Anyway, it's it's really lovely. I love the way you have the television here. You can see all the faces. Pardon? Yes, I know. <laughs> we we have a and this camera turns and <laughs> it watches you. <laughs> So, <laughs> yeah. Newcomers, all always have a shot. Just like if they want to come to center, that is also their shot. Yeah. Not that it's yeah. not in something situation. Yeah. If we want to go out, we should we make plans. And if we want to charge our cars, we make plans. So yesterday I, I was selling, I was telling Poonam Ben. Just one minute. So yesterday I was chatting with Poonam Ben. <laughs> Uh, 
the car is nearly 10% and coming down the battery and she's saying, I never reached this level. And I said, you can put charge overnight. She said, in overnight also, it charges very little bit, not much in general connection. Need to search for supercharger where they keep the company charges within half an hour, 10 minutes, she said, battery will become full. So immediately I thought, so many people are thinking after the Zoom meetings, we have our comfortable zones. We choose our comfortable zones not coming out, oh, we can have a Zoom. So like this, in whole day, you are in Zoom, it won't charge you. <laughs> when you come to Baba's room for a minute also, for a minute also, it's a supercharger. Of course, you have charge in room, homes, but it is own charge. Still, we feel it's charging, <laughs> that's it. So that why I say, and one more thing I remember, Dari Janki used to say, uh, maybe some after some tests, doctor said it may be hereditary, getting sugar and BP, everything like that, so many things. And those days they are starting up research of hereditary things for new diseases also. And then she shared in a class. You people are saying these illnesses and diseases coming as a hereditary. For so many years, we are eating Brahma Bhojan, white, and we are having connection with our Supreme Father and spiritual father. Why don't we get hereditary from those fathers? So how broad they think out of box um, to visualize it. Yes, it is true. If I am having a 40 years of sustenance in Madhuvan or things, why don't I get hereditary of Supreme Father? So that way, the wonderful thing is Baba never kept the limitations of this world or things. So he always mm. uh, keeps on our mindset, our awareness, wherever we are, we can have a mindset of how I am in Madhuban and really I am doing it. So I am in Madhuban. If I am in Madhuban, my mindset is, oh, I need to go there and here. Still, my body is there. My awareness and mindset is not there. So that is most of the thing I can say for Zoom people or newcomers. <laughs> <laughs> it is not that if I sit with Dadi or eat with Dadi or Baba is feeding us or Baba giving Toli Tristi for so many times. It doesn't matter. It, I, I will say it don't it won't make any difference in our um, effortful life or our progress. But mainly that way in Sakar is also some mothers they never seen Baba. They write a letters like anything. Mm. We never do that. Mm. So Did that is most important. Once a week? Yeah. I Gita Pen is saying once a week, I will say every day for a minute <laughs> also, you must come to Baba's room. That is the supercharger, I realize. So that is you all, all we are all having choice of us.